Hey, today I'm going to show you guys how to make three simple CG effects. I'm using NVIDIA's Omniverse Create because it's free and easy to use, which is perfect for beginners. So if you're a filmmaker who wants to dip their toe into visual effects for the first time, we got you. I'm going to show you how to do a shatter effect, a smoke simulation, and a really quick and simple ragdoll. First thing you need to do is download the Omniverse installer from NVIDIA and then install Create. There's a ton of other cool programs in the Omniverse suite, so feel free to explore and download other things too, but today we just need Create. Okay, let's start with the shatter effect. Say we have a fight scene and we really want to spice it up by having the actors kick through a piece of the environment. This stone pillar on Render Crate is perfect to practice with, and it's free. So if you don't already have a free Production Crate account, go sign up for one and snag it. But almost any 3D model will do if you want to follow along, even a cube. In the Content tab, navigate to where you downloaded the pillar and drop it into your scene. You should see it pop up here in the viewport, but also notice that it's listed over here in the stage. Expand the menu and you'll see a folder called Looks. Inside of that is the material. So if you need to make changes to it or plug in your textures, that's where you'll find those options. For example, I think I'll just increase the roughness because stone pillars usually aren't shiny. To make our pillar react to gravity and fall down, we need to activate some settings to get the physics working. Go up to Create, Physics, Physics Scene. This creates a new object in the Stage menu which allows you to control values like the strength of gravity and which direction things fall. The default settings will work for us. To make this pillar fall, right click on it and go to Add, Physics, Rigid Body with Collider Preset. Now press play on the left side of the screen and the pillar will fall through the floor. That's alright. Press Stop to reset the scene. To make things collide with the ground, right click on it and go to Add, Physics, Collider Preset and press play to test it out. Cool! And then press Stop to reset the scene. Alright, now let's break this thing. To do that, you'll need to load an extension called Blast. Go up to Window, Extension, and search for Blast. Click the little green switch to activate it, and now you should have a window here at the bottom called Blast. Click this box in the top left to go to Prim Mode, and then select the pillar again. Now, in the Blast window, we can shatter this thing into pieces. I'm going to set the Voronoi sights to about 10. This is the number of pieces that your mesh will initially be broken up into, so you might want to try a different number depending on what you're working on. But don't go too high because we're going to be breaking some of the pieces up into sub-pieces. Next, you want to set your contact threshold. This is the strength of the bonds, aka how hard your object has to be hit before it'll break apart. Let's try 1000. Now click the Fracture Selected button. It won't look any different yet, but it is broken. If you want to preview the pieces, scroll down to Debug Visualization menu and set the Explode View Radius to 5. There we go, now we're talking. Let's break some of these chunks even more. If you imagine a window shattering, you'll notice that the impact area breaks into smaller shards. So try and add more breakup to the part that the actor is going to smash through. I think I'll go about halfway up on mine. You can actually click these chunks one by one and press Fracture Selected over and over to break them into smaller and smaller pieces. But don't go too crazy here unless you have a really fast computer, like this dope laptop we got from Nvidia. When you're done, set the explode view radius back to zero. If you press play, nothing should happen because stone pillars don't usually just explode on their own. So let's create a sphere or something else to smash into it. Go up to create, mesh, sphere, and move it into place. I'm also going to scale mine to a reasonable size. Right click the sphere and go to add, physics, rigid body with collider preset. If you press play, the sphere should fall. Press stop to reset. Now let's give it some initial velocity so that it smashes into the pillar. Scroll down in the sphere's properties until you get to physics. Set the linear velocity to something pretty high in the direction that's towards the pillar. In my case I went with 500 in the Z direction. Press play and you'll probably see that it just bounces off. That's because it needs more mass. Press stop and right click on the sphere and go to add physics mass. Now in the properties of the sphere you can change the mass settings. The number you choose depends on the scale of the scene. For mine, I went with a value of 1000, but that might be wildly too high if your scene is really big. Now you can just have fun with it by changing where the sphere starts, changing its speed, and trying to get the perfect shatter effect. Okay, let's make some smoke. Omniverse is capable of some really amazing fluid simulations, but we're going to try to keep this one beginner friendly. Just be aware that if you do need a more complex effect than this, Omniverse will be able to handle it for sure. And I'll be using our HP ZBook for this, which is one of our more powerful computers, and it happens to be a laptop. The A5500 GPU from Nvidia is going to help Omniverse fly, and if you want to see more about this laptop, check the link in the description. First thing we need to do is convert one of these footage crate smoke effects into an image sequence called a sprite sheet. Luckily we have a very convenient After Effects plugin for that. To go more in depth into how it works, check out this video on our channel where Nate explains it all. But very simply, load the script, and then drop your footage into the animation comp. I'm going to retime mine so that it fits the length of the comp. Now switch over to the Atlas comp and you should see that the video has been broken up into a sprite sheet, which is also called a texture atlas. 
You can set the desired resolution and the number of frames here. I'm going with 4096 by 4096 and 64 frames. Now go up to Composition and Save Frame As. I'm going to save it as Photoshop Layers because it's really important for Omniverse that the image doesn't have a background. But let's really quickly open it up in Photoshop so that we can flatten the layers, convert it to 8-bit color, and save it as a PNG. Nice. Okay, back into Omniverse and let's create a particle system. First go to Create, Shape, and choose a sphere. Now select the sphere and go back up to Create, Particles, and choose With Geometry Replicator. This will start emitting sprites from the surface of the sphere. Sprites are basically just little flat planes of geometry, but they turn to always stay facing the camera, which is a very convenient thing to put our new smoke texture on. First, we need to make these little sprites bigger. In your stage window, open up the OmniGraph folder, and then expand the Particle System node, and then select the emitter. Scroll down until you see particle size. I set mine to about 100 on all three axes, but you could set it however you want. It would also help to set them to randomly rotate so that later on when we apply the texture, it doesn't look too repetitive. So I set the random rotation Y value to 360. You can set the other axes to 360 as well, but then the sprites won't always face the camera anymore. I guess it depends on the look you're going for. We also need to change a render setting really quick to make this work, so go up to the Render Settings tab, and then to the Ray Tracing tab, and under Translucency, turn on Enable Fractional Cutout Opacity. That was a mouthful. But basically that'll just make our smoke have softer edges. Okay, let's apply our Texture Atlas, or Sprite Sheet, whatever you want to call it. In the Looks folder, you'll find a material called Particles. Click on that, and activate the Texture checkbox. That's going to allow you to put your sprite sheet into the bitmap file input. Use the content tab to navigate to where you save the sprite sheet and drop it in. Right now we're seeing the entire sprite sheet spread out on each sprite. So let's tell it to instead scroll across the image like a flipbook. Go up to Window, Particles, Editor. And we want to edit an existing particle system, so click on this icon here, and then select our particle system from this list. If you've never seen a node graph before, don't panic. We're only going to make one simple change. Scroll over to the right and locate where the Solver node flows into the Geometry Replicator node. Notice that there's a line that flows from output particles on the left into the particles input on the right. Well, we need to insert a node called STPanner right between them. So here on the left, search for STPanner and drag it into the editor. Now reroute that line through the STPanner. Click on STPanner and on the right, you can now set how many rows and columns are in our sprite sheet. If you remember back in After Effects, I chose 64 frames, so that's eight rows by eight columns. And whoa, check it out, it's working. The sprites are scrolling through our texture atlas like a flipbook over the course of their lifespan. All right, let's make some changes. Back in the Stages tab, select the Emitter again. I want my smoke to go upward, so change the Emit Along Axis to 1 and the Emit Away From Center to 0. It looks like it's coming out sideways, so let's click on the sphere in the stage and rotate it 90 degrees on the Z axis. Nice. While we're here, we can also make the sphere smaller to make the smoke come from a smaller point in space and then click on this little eyeball to hide the sphere. And now we got a little puff of smoke. Let me show you just a couple more settings if you want to change the behavior. Back in the emitter, you can increase the lifespan of the particles from one to maybe three. Now they'll stay on screen longer and cycle through our animation slower. You can also set the lifespan random to one or two if we want to introduce some variation. We can also increase or decrease the speed and the speed random for less uniformity. Last thing we'll mess with is the spawn rate. Right now it's emitting 10 particles per second. Let's try 20. Now the smoke is denser, but we're starting to see a lot of weird crunchiness, and that's because there's a limit to how many transparent objects can be stacked on top of each other. So we need to change a render setting to increase the quality. But heads up because this will impact performance on slower computers, so beware. Go back to the render settings tab, and then the ray tracing tab, and then under translucency, and slowly increase the max refraction bounces until you no longer see that ugly crunchiness. And that's it for smoke. This effect is great for adding some spiciness to your VFX shots, and it's also great for video games. Try experimenting with other effects on Footage Crate and share the results with us. Oh, someone try out this bullet animation and tag us on Instagram with it. I bet that would look awesome. Okay, one last example. Whew, you guys are getting a lot of info with this one. Maybe you need to make a ragdoll simulation for your film, but you don't have the time or the knowledge to do it right. So here's how you do it janky. I've set up this simple scene where one of our render crate characters is running along and this car comes from the side and hits him. When the car makes contact, we're going to swap him out for a simulated version of him. So figure out which frame of the animation he gets hit on and export a separate model of just that frame. Back in Omniverse, import the static version of the character. I've found that the next steps work best if you keep it in the middle of the grid while you set up the physics. So right click on him, and instead of adding a rigid body like in the previous example, add a deformable mesh. Now when you press play you'll see that he doesn't just fall, he's all bendy like jello. 
If it's looking too stiff, you can scroll down to physics in the properties window and increase the simulated mesh resolution. I'm not going to turn mine up too high because I still want them to move like a body. While you're in the physics section, go ahead and uncheck deformable mesh enabled because we don't want them to collapse until the car hits them, right? Move them into place on the frame where the car makes contact. And now the trick is to toggle the visibility of the animated one off right before the car hits and toggle the visibility on for the deformable version. You can find the visibility by scrolling down in the properties window. Switch it from inherited to invisible and then right click to add your keyframes. On the frame right before the deformable version becomes visible, we want to set a keyframe on the deformable mesh enabled setting with the box unchecked. Right click to add your keyframe. Okay, and then one frame later, when the mesh becomes visible, turn on deformable mesh enabled and right click to add another keyframe. One last step before we can watch our amazing simulation, let's add a bunch of frames to the end of the timeline. And the reason for that is I found that if the playhead makes it to the end of the timeline, sometimes the physics don't reset properly, but it always resets if you press stop before the animation ends. I haven't figured out why that's happening. Um, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Leave a comment if you know how to fix it. Okay, enough talking, let's watch it. So press play. Oh man, that's gnarly. <laughs> Remember to press stop to reset the physics. Now you can experiment with changing the simulation mesh resolution on the deformable mesh to get different results. I found that this is a pretty quick and easy way to get a ragdoll simulation without spending too much time, but there are some limitations. Since it's really more of a jello simulation, the character will try to settle back into the original pose instead of looking all loosey-goosey like a truly unconscious werewolf. But if the impact is hard enough, the limbs look like they're flailing in a pretty convincing way. Just be sure to cut away before it completely settles. All right, and that's it. Omniverse is a great tool for beginners and experienced artists alike. If you're a filmmaker who's trying to incorporate visual effects into your films, this might be the place to start. If you make anything cool with Omniverse Create, be sure to share it with us on Instagram or Discord. And if you have any ideas for other experiments we could run in Omniverse or requests for more advanced tips, leave us a comment below. All right, later creators.